What's up, guys? I'm John, aka Maroka, and welcome to Spiral Spiel. So, we're in Jade School Tier 3, and we're just gonna see where it takes us, just cause I need... I need just stuff. I need some space to give me time to ramble, cause... That's stuff to talk about! Things have happened. Like, it's kind of still happening right now, but, you know. So, I, what I've been thinking about for the last few days is I'll talk about the dramatic Nintendo announcements about their clampdown on Let's Plays and things because it's totally relevant and important and pertinent to our community and modern media and things, and it is. But it's slightly been overshadowed by today's headlines, which I actually pretty much discovered by accident, which is the new Xbox announcement. So, I got home from work today, I thought, you know, isn't the new Xbox announcement, like, sometime soon? So, I decided I'll just have a quick look, see when it is. My news might be on the Xbox website. Oh, hey, it's in four minutes' time. Okay, we better tune into that. So, I just spent the last hour and a bit tuning into Twitter, um, the Penny Arcade reports, sort of live blogging it. And of course, the actual live stream itself. So, it kind of ended a bit open ended. I'm not sure whether they're done announcing it yet. It's been over an hour since the live stream ended, and there is no hour. Oh, let's run away and get health. There's no, no immediate obvious indication that there will be more to come. Well, I, well at the end of the live stream, they implied there would be more to come, but. They've kept us hanging for over an hour now, so I'm just going to go with what I've got. Because i, I got to get this video made tonight, and if I stay up all night hoping for tidbits of information about Microsoft, it's never going to get made. So you're going to get what I know about the Xbox as of two hours from the beginning of the announcement live stream. So, started out with... As you might imagine, Major Nelson saying, Hey, look how pretty our Xbox place is, and introduced us, what then followed up with what appeared to be just an advert for Xbox. Yeah, we're here to see Xbox, you don't need to advertise your product to us, but hey. So uh, it took a while, once it actually got going, what we found is, basically what everyone's been saying for a while now, is that the Xbox just really kind of isn't a games console anymore. They've been pushing sort of music and video and things for a while. Oh, download movies, watch your TV shows, go... Please, please, please use Zune. For the love of God, will you please use Zune? That kind of stuff. That's been pushed for a while. Uh, nobody wants to use Zune, but that's neither here nor there. This isn't about Zune. Let's not make it about Zune. But... Nonetheless, they've continued down this track. Which, as far as gaming is concerned, I still feel might work out in Sony's favour. Because most of what they've had to say was about TV and things. It's like, look how much TV we've got in your console. You can watch TV, you get regional TV, you'll get live TV, you'll get TV catch-up, you'll get all these TV things. And I'm sat there thinking, I don't watch TV. I'm a gamer. I came to watch an un unveiling of a games console. There's nothing about games here. What have you made? And I know what they've made. They're, what they're trying to do is trying to make an entertainment center. They want to make it the central focus, the hub of the home. There's where you will go to get all your media news. I've missed a key somewhere. I'm going to backtrack and grab a key. If I can. So, there's surprisingly little on games. Kind of disappointing. I expected there would be at least something, but honestly there's just not been much so far. It's crazy how little there was. So, once they got done talking about how much TV they'd squeezed into one box, and how instant you could change between TV, which is just... It's not even a TV box anymore, it's just an ADD box. It's like, oh, you can shout at your console and it will change channels, and then you will change to a game on the fly, and then you can go back to a TV, and then you can go to a movie, just by shouting at a TV, and it'll just flip like that, instant, 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 change, 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 change. And it's like, who needs to do this? Nobody. Nobody needs to do this. I know a big deal is made in the media these days about, oh, everyone's got ADD, or there's such a high rate of ADD. I believe something like the diagnosis rate in the US is like 10%. 
I recall reading an article the other day that said in France it's only 0.5%, so maybe it's a cultural problem, not an actual thing, an actual medical thing. But yeah, in this day and age, say everybody's got ADD, and everybody needs to be able to flip between the TV and the game and the movie and the music, and then Skype on the fly, and it's all fantastic and innovative and brand new and shiny, and you don't need all this. It doesn't need to be able to do this. I wanted a games console. You're talking about innovation, and you've got Skype in there. I can use Skype. Most things have Skype. I've, you can get Skype on your phone. If I wanted to talk to someone, I'd talk to them, and if I wanted to talk to another gamer, Surely Xbox Live already has provisions in place for that kind of thing. It seems a little bit ridiculous, all this thing, all these things are touted as brand new, shiny things, and none of them are. They're just not. Fantastic moments. I've ranted about this at great, great lengths before. There must be a button somewhere, is there? There it is, finally. But the sheer amount of adverts on it, even when they're promoting their product on the stage for the first time, the big unveiling, this is what the Xbox will look like for the first time when you turn it on. We're on stage here, brand new, this is live, this is the first time anybody has ever seen this interface. We're going to launch the Xbox for the first time here, right here and right now today. First thing that comes up, Xbox home screen, it was like 80% adverts. Buy our stuff, here, see some Nike products, here, see some... Here, the, let's see, buy, late, buy the latest movie, here, watch... Things that you can buy, and it's like it's the actual bit where you actually get to play the games and access the content that you already own, and that kind of thing. The functionality you might be wanting access to rather than just an opportunity to spend more money. Tiny little bar right at the bottom of the screen, it got like genuinely less than a quarter of the screen space. It's ridiculous. I've, I've complained about their advertising lengths before, but that's I'm pretty sure. It's never been quite to that extent. I don't recall it taking up that much real estate on the screen. And bear in mind that, that, well, they've not announced it, but surely if they were turning it into a free service, they might have made mention of it because that would be a big deal. So I'm going to go ahead and assume that they're going to charge me at least the same, if not more. I've heard people theorize that it could potentially cost more per month. Someone's saying, like, oh, it could be $15 a month now, and people would pay it. And like, yeah, they probably would. I won't. I mean, I'd rather draw the line at what it costs now. $15 a month for your regional equivalent is getting a little bit too rich for my blood. Especially when the perks that it confers are mostly wasted on me. Let's be honest, I just want to play games. I can do that on PC. It doesn't cost me $15 or regional equivalent a month. So, yeah, didn't like that. Didn't like that a lot. So, and then they started talking about technology, as one might imagine, and that was... I'm not sure whether that was entertaining or just silly or what. They got the, they got the new Kinect Mark II, which is astonishingly massive, actually. That thing's ridiculous. And, like, oh, it can actually measure the reaction time it takes for photons to travel from the camera to your face and bounce back. And it will then measure that time and compensate for that latency. And it's like, there is no speed of light latency in a room the size of your living room. There is negligible speed of light latency when we're talking about distances halfway around the planet, really. It actually comes down to it. If you actually want to measure the time it takes one photon to travel halfway around the planet Earth, we're talking milliseconds. The time it takes for light to travel from a camera to your face and back to the camera is almost non-existent. I have a very hard time actually believing that that's a feature and not just something I made up. How is that a thing? It's ridiculous. It's all crazy. Amounts of marketing ridiculosity that there was in there. It was just crazy. I mean, the first actual amount of games that came on to be talked about, uh, first games that brought in at well, over the half hour mark, they'd been talking about stuff that wasn't games for over half an hour by the time they actually mentioned any games. And the first thing they brought on was EA! At which point I was like, yeah, well, it's EA. I'm not exactly big on EA, I know a lot of people aren't big on EA, but at least they are a big name in gaming, they can make games and stuff. 
So at least maybe they've got something relevant to say. Uh, logo comes up on the screen. EA Sports. Oh. So, yeah. Revolutionary brand new game. You're cutting edge of technology. The game you get iterated every single year is going to be iterated again this year. Big surprise. I've been told I should check my loadout every level. So let's... Where do I do that now? Uh, gate map. What have we got here? We've got beasts. Let's put on some piercing resist. Seems like a plan. So, take off. Um, why can't I? Why can I not take it off? Take off the divine mantle. Cooper's armor. And uh, unequipped costume. That's how that works. Makes sense, obviously. Right. Uh, I got my pointy sword. That'll do the job. So yeah, EA Sports comes out and says, look what we've got, we're so amazing, this is going to be absolutely going to rock your world. We've got, we've got FIFA 2014, and I, is it better, is it any way different to 2013? I suspect not. To be honest, probably not a lot of difference. Well, you got a new engine, you got, you got the whole new console, yeah, it might look a bit shinier, you might have modelled the players a bit more detailed. Is the game any different? We don't know. They didn't tell us. The fact that they didn't tell us suggests probably it isn't. Do you know what they talked about? They talked about how real the players look like and how it's going to be totally revolutionary. It's going to totally change gaming forever because it's a bit prettier than the last one. I don't think you know what the word revolutionary means. These words, you are using them incorrectly. They talked about the AI, which apparently is going to allow for the player to make more decisions at once, which, correct me if I'm wrong, but surely the implication of that is they're saying our console is going to make you smarter. What? The player can make more decisions at once. Only if they're a Korean StarCraft player. Most players are used to playing a football game. They're not going to be able to make more decisions at once. Jeez, ridiculous, absolutely crazy. And most of it genuinely was just touting these graphics. It's like, look at all these cutting edge graphics. And it's... So, the actual improvements are compared to last generation over any, uh, any previous jumps in graphical fidelity are pretty much negligible. There's a fantastic thing I read recently. Who was it by? Who was it? I'm pretty sure it was I'm gonna I'm gonna cite someone here but I can't be sure it's correct I think it might have been Trevor Stricker of Disco Pixel in his recent newsletter he uh, the quotes was in previous generations you could show the game to your mother and she would be able to discern that there was genuinely an improvement if you, if you had a SNES or a Mega Drive and you showed her the N64 or the PlayStation, she could say, oh my god, yes, that looks better. When you upgrade to the Dreamcast, yeah, discernible quality jump again. You know, jump to the PS2, whatever. PS3, in fact. All of these, yeah, they, they're marked improvements. In this current generation, we're just squeezing every last drop we can out of it. There's just properly scraping the barrel in, for, in terms of graphical fidelity. It's not going to get a hell of a lot better. It's fractional improvements it's if your main selling point is it looks prettier than last one it needs to look dramatically prettier than last one and it doesn't it looks a tiny 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 amount better it's crazy why why are we can we not innovate i mean clearly we can innovate indies are innovating there's a lot of innovative stuff out there but none of it's being done with graphics because there's only so much you can do with graphics So, okay, on, or once EA is done, once EA Sports is done, it's not even EA, there's nothing interesting on Ukraine from EA. Uh, the, what was there was... Quantum Break was announced, actually, which, as a game, looks like it might potentially be interesting, but they didn't really tell us much about it. There was certainly no gameplay, there was just some pre-rendered footage of things crashing into bridges, some... some telekinetic ability of a small child where she warps a massive boat into a bridge and things crash and it's clearly intended to show off the physics 
And once again, we're going, ooh, look at all these shiny, pretty things explode. And it's, yes, yes, it's very pretty, but really, is this what we've come down to? Making things, making things explode so that we can go, ooh. Yes, yes, it is. That, that, that's what all society is about these days, isn't it, I think? Making pretty things explode so we can go, ooh, at them. I mean, don't get me wrong, I like some exploding ooh, but, you know. If you're trying... If you're trying to sell me a console that is going to cost several hundred pounds, several weeks wages of mine, you better damn well justify it and watching a pretty ooh explosion, explo explosion, an explosion, yes, an explosion ain't really going to do it for me. So that's that, yeah. Uh, I will reserve judgment until I've seen more of it, but what can I say, I'm already jaded and hardened against AAA marketing crud. Can't even be bothered with it anymore. So then we had we had a, 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 a I did see that there were a few comments on Twitter actually about um, 343, obviously who are now in control of the Halo franchise, uh, brought a woman onto the stage. Woo, a woman in gaming, which it almost feels like it was sort of token effort to say, suck it, Sony, you didn't have a woman on stage, was sort of the cynical take on that. I mean, well, yeah, it is nice to actually see that, a bit of diversity in gaming, which doesn't normally occur. There's also that element of Sony didn't have a woman in their launch, and everybody picked up on it, and everyone criticised them, so it's almost like Microsoft trying to one-up them. But that aside, whether you believe that's the case or not... Oh, we're going into... Ooh, we are going into compound! Do not know which compound this is. I'm not good at compounds. Oh well. Let's head down and do it anyway. Yay, level up cat eye. So yeah, Lady from 343 comes out and goes on about how wonderful and amazing Halo is these days. They absolutely love working on Halo now that Bungie don't want to work on Halo anymore. So they have control of it and this is a fantastic thing. It's a wonderful universe and they're not... But no mention of a game, basically. They're not doing Halo game anymore. Well, maybe they are, but there was no mention of it. What they did talk about was Halo the TV series. They really like doing the Halo promotions for Halo 4, so what they want to do is a Halo TV series with a moment to note on the fact that, oh god I didn't change my armour, with a moment to note on the fact that they mentioned it would be a premium TV series. So yeah, clearly it's going to be a pay per episode kind of deal. Download the episodes through your Xbox, pay however many. Microsoft Mickey Mouse dollars to, for the privilege. Actually, uh, someone recently mentioned that Microsoft are doing away with the Mickey Mouse dollars, so maybe that's not a thing anymore. I haven't actually seen an official story, that's just something someone told me. I have not verified the veracity of this. Could be untrue. But if true, a nice, nice move. They're catching up with the rest of the world. Realize the rest of the world doesn't like Mickey Mouse dollars. So yeah, no, um, well I never particularly watched the Halo 4 series either, I mean as much as I like Halo, I just don't do TV at the best of times. I know a lot of people do and it's great that Microsoft's pushing TV for those people but for, may, maybe I'm just not Microsoft's demographic anymore but I'm not into TV and they're pushing it, they're just pushing lots of things I couldn't care less about is what I'm getting to here. I just feel like maybe maybe I'm not Microsoft's intended audience anymore. I was at one point, which is kind of just what's miffed me the most about it. I I used to love Microsoft. Well, maybe not Microsoft themselves, but I used to love the Xbox. The Xbox was a great console. I was quite happy to pay for the service. It was a good, ser reasonably good service. And. Yeah, it was a good solid product, and so um, slowly but surely it's turned into something that's not designed for me. It's a product that's not something I want to use. There's n nothing on it that holds any any interest. And that door just opened when I swung it, hit it. That's I've never seen a door do that before in Spiral Knights. So that's a new thing. It must be part of compounds. Cool. 
So what have we got here? Can this be interacted with? What if I hit it with my sword more times? No. Shame. Would have been nice to see that just do something. I don't know. Jet of steam or something? So, ow, 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 Oh, God, ow. I'm in a bad place here. Oh, God, I'm in a really bad place here. Oh, didn't work too well. So, let's get this room cleared of things. So, I've got some maneuverability. Get things exploded. So, right, uh, yeah, once, uh, once we're done with Halo, we got more sports because, obviously... Gamers are so totally into sports. You know, we got a device ostensibly, certainly originally aimed at the geek market. Maybe, obviously, they're trying to go for the broad market these days, but certainly a device that originally was mainly aimed at the geeks, the gamers, the nerds, that type of person. And all of a sudden, it's all about football. Wait, what? So yeah, we've got, we've got exclusive NFL partnership. Oh my god! Follow NFL on your Xbox. Eh? We're talking about an audience who are renowned for, generally speaking, not being all that into sports. And there's a really, really heavy emphasis on it. I don't know what the deal with that is. That's kind of weird. So yeah, if you like sports, buy an Xbox. Totally, totally, totally. So then, finally, finally, if one excludes, uh, if one ignores the fact that I didn't pay a lot of attention to the quantum quantum break thing, finally we've got a game that actually is something. That's not even true. Actually, quantum quantum break is actually the only original content. I was going to say, if I, I was about to say, a series that's not an iteration every year, but it is. Quantum Break is the only series that isn't isn't a new iteration because the last game they announced was Call of Duty. Call of Duty Ghosts, which is not even an announcement. We know about Call of Duty Ghosts. This is a thing people have heard of. There was a big cardboard cutout in my local supermarket that says, buy Call of Duty Ghosts now when it comes out later this year. I mean... How? Surely the implications of that are you are buying it for a console that you don't even know anything about at this stage. There's lots of words like exclusive thrown around about these Xbox products. So you know, if Call of Duty Ghosts were somehow an Xbox exclusive, you would essentially be committing to purchase the Xbox as well by committing to purchase Ghosts at this stage. You'll be saying, yeah, when I come back in November to buy a console, I, I, to buy the game, I'm also going to have to buy a console from you. I suppose it works out in the supermarket's favour. But, it's a weird one. I can't envision that actually being the case. I mean, even a timed exclusive seems like a weird one for a series like Call of Duty. It's big enough and Activision has that much sway that... I don't think they'd want to take the cut in sales by only having on one console for a franchise that's that big. They wouldn't want to lose the the PlayStation PC sales for even for six months or whatever by having it solely on Xbox. I mean, God knows it might shift some Xboxes, but there's plenty of people that probably wouldn't just buy a console just for just for the new Call of Duty. So yeah, what will the new Call of Duty hold? Guess what? Graphics. Bet you didn't see that coming. Oh god, we got the little nippers now, haven't we? Oh yes, yes we do. Fun times. Let's get over here where I can get some range and kill the robots. And the healer. The healer needs to die. And you lot need to die. Right, I do seem to recall this was a room that gave me trouble in the past when I did the promo vid, the uh, preview video for um, compounds. So let's try and get through it as quick as possible. So, what else will Call of Duty feature besides better graphics? Because check out the hair on this guy's forearm. Really? The hair on the forearm? Well, it's got dogs! Everyone's like, oh my god, dogs! Check out the dogs! In well, a slightly sarcastic way, because no. No game's ever had a dog before. Well, check out the dog's AI, which is supposed to be really, really 
doggy, I guess. And I nearly hit that explosion and died. <sighs> oh well. Life's about risks, isn't it? You guys need to take some spikes in the face. Because there are too many of you. Stop swarming me, freaks. So yeah, big on the AI. Showed, ooh, the fish swim away from you when you swim near them when you go into the underwater bits. It's the big on animal AI, I guess. This is sort of... Yeah, I guess this is Call of Duty Pets Edition. So, I don't know. Big on the old animals. Bit of a weird one. I mean, it's not like it's not like I haven't done the dogs before. I mean, Modern Warfare 2 and World at War had dogs. These are just prettier dogs, I guess, and allegedly smarter. And I never got the impression that dogs particularly needed to be smart in terms of AI. They are, after all, dogs. We're not talking about another... Well... Yeah, when, when it's a player, or when it's a human character, obviously the idea is that they're supposed to be another living, breathing human being who can just plot and strategize against you. So, you want a clever AI. Either. But it's an animal, it's just not that. I don't know. I'm super cynical, what can I say? Oh yes, and the fingernails. Oh yes, we must have the high resolution fingernails. You can see the dirt under the nails. That's what's going to sell me on a game. Being able to see the soldier's dirty fingernails. Okay, these guys are getting out of hand. Let's cull the, cull the herd a bit. Let's use a Polaris. Polaris will smash things up a bit, right? At least the robots, hopefully. Got one of them. How are you not dead? You should be dead by now. Uh, yeah, it's okay. Um, that's Call of Duty, so they've got fingernails, a fish, and dogs, I guess, is their main selling point. Uh, yeah, I don't know about you, but I really want to rush out and buy it after seeing fingernails, fish, and dogs. And that's pretty much where it ended. It kind of just went, okay, thanks for watching, we've got, we've, we've got sports and Call of Duty and TV. Come buy our thing. Like, but I don't like Call of Duty, I don't much like sports, and I don't watch TV. Why should I be buying your thing? There's no reason for me to be buying your thing. Ow! Little, little blighter. And then the one thing that came out after the stream was over, the one last remaining thing, which... I, know, maybe I, I would like to think the stream is going to continue, because it did seem like it tailed off a bit. There was no mention of... They never confirmed whether it's going to be all always on, which has obviously been subject to much controversy. They didn't... The always online thing that's been big in the last few weeks, or month or so, whatever. They never mentioned anything about sort of digital downloads, that kind of thing, and I would have been, would have been nice to have some kind of mention of the indies, because obviously indies. Sony and Nintendo have both been kind of really big on indies lately, and Microsoft kind of have kind of taken a lot of fire for being really an utter pain in the ass to work with with indies. Everyone's saying, "Oh God, don't work with Microsoft; they're just utter pants." Whereas Sony and Nintendo will actually, you know, go out their way to actually help you get your game out there and sold. So those are things I would like to have heard about which haven't been mentioned. The one thing that wasn't mentioned but came out like a couple of minutes after the end of the stream was that there will be no backwards compatibility. So that sucks as well. So if you actually want to play any of the older games, you got to hang on to your old Xbox, I guess. Which, I don't know, it's one of those things that at the start of a new generation everybody kind of wants to have because it's a new generation, there are no real, not many games on the new console and you want to be able to play your old games because you still have those and can, they're good, whereas they're run on on the new ones. So you want the backwards compatibility to be able to do that, but none at all this time. I know that's it's kind of a feature that usually seems to end up getting phased out throughout the console's lifespan, and that always annoys me when it happens. But you can understand why it happens. This time they're just going straight out the door. Nope. New games only. 
so reasonably safe to say I don't think I'm gonna be picking it up unless something absolutely incredible comes out between now and Christmas some major earth-shattering innovation and news and completely changes everything I don't think that's gonna happen though so there you go I didn't even tell you what it was called did I, I don't think well, I hope you might know by now if you're into gaming you should probably have picked up on it it is now the Xbox One. Presumably one because it's the one device you need in the living room. It's trying to unify everything, I guess. But I don't use anything else in the living room anyway. I only want a games console. I'm going to buy a PS4. Maybe. I might just stick with Steam's big picture. So that's my thoughts on the new stuff. Thank you very much for watching. Please leave a like if you enjoyed hearing my little ramblings and rants. Please favourite the video because that helps me out a lot. And please subscribe if you're not already. Because I like I like meeting new friends. Come come join me. And if you want if you've got anything you want to ask or something for me to talk about next week, please leave a question or comment in the comment section down below. Always great to hear from people. So thank you very much for watching. I've been Maroka, and I shall see you next week. Yeah!